fantasies of being a sustainable community. We have ponds in the front yard and the backyard which just have new have new fish and they're sort of like mosquito traps for the fish but they're also frog habitat. The idea of planting um, native flowers and wild fauna um, was to kind of attract bees and other little insects as pollinators for our tomatoes and flowering vegetables and vegetalia. <laughs> That, like genitalia. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. As the Minister of Energy and Heating this year, I've been working on collecting this uh, very s substantial wood pile um, because we're planning on maybe putting in a furnace, a, no a second furnace stove, I mean wood stove, in our house, as well as perhaps some solar panels. Uh, in an effort to create a more sustainable environment and one that will not use as much gas and be much cheaper. Um, over here we have turnips and kind of moving over this way we've got some more types of greens, herbs. Um, this bed has radishes and peas. Homeless kitty that lives here now. We also have a cat sanctuary. <laughs> Every cat's 10 miles yonder. <laughs> There's another one. Raspberry! Oh, look at them. Yeah, they've started. Look at them! This is mostly herbs. We've got some right here. Various yarrow. Um, echinacea is starting to come up now. Trying to institute shoe taking off. Didn't work. This is the bike room. This used to house a whole bunch of bikes and lots and lots of bike tools and different things. That thing that holds up the bike. What's it called? Huh? Oh, the, the stand. Stand. We donated uh, most of our stuff to the Bicycle Co-op Revolutions. I guess it kind of started out, it, this, whole, this whole thing, I know it sounds weird, was kind of an accident. I'm really glad that it happened, but um, I used to work at the Peddler Bike Shop on Highland. And, you know, I've always been totally into bikes, and I was really, really, really happy with the first job I ever had, which was working at the bike shop, and really amazed at how much, like, potential uh, joy there was uh, in bicycles and doing things through bikes. Um, but as, like, I spent more time at the bike shop, I began to see how how corrupt business can make things, even if it's a small business because you're still always striving, you know, for, for the almighty dollar and you tend to compromise human values, human integrity, and just basic human needs in the process of trying to, to attain this dollar. And I, I remember there being some pretty shitty power dynamics. I mean, I know they were there between my boss and myself and just my, my my coworkers and myself and realizing that I got more respect and I gained like, uh, people gain more appreciation for me, not through like my personality and like not through saying that I was, you know, maybe a good human being or like a decent person who treat, treated people decently, but with the more that I knew, the more knowledge that I acquired, that I could 
feasibly hold over people and be like, look, this is what I know, so this means that I have power. What's been interesting, too, about, about it from the angle of being in this building is that I think with, with almost every organization in the building, there's a um, sense that we all have different tools that we use. Like some people are artists, and, and of course as a church, we're a worship community, and Anthony's using the bikes, and uh, uh, you have a group like Food Not Bombs that uses food, or the dance groups. You, you have different groups doing their, their own thing, but ultimately what they're trying to do is tap into different communities and tap into a vision of, of really empowerment um, and, and kind of a wider way of bringing people together. So it's been interesting to see bicycles do that so effectively. I, I mean, it's a wonderful symbol of, of how we all have a different um, <laughs> spoke into the center. <laughs> what, what we essentially want to do, first of all, is offer bikes, bike services to people who have been marginalized in the past. We, we can be better than that. We can create a society. We can create, at least starting in a small community, uh, better ways of implementing um, of implementing bikes into the community, i.e., giving people the education and giving people the resources that they need to be able to get their bikes repaired, to be able to get bikes in general, to be able to get bike parts. Uh, and we want to do that through organizing a, a communally run, collectively run, collectively organized space where this bike shop is everything that the community and the people involved in the community want to make it. Because like I said earlier, we have to get back on bikes and we have to leave this car culture behind. If we're a way or a tool to make a change in their life versus just telling them that the world is going to hell. And, um, you know, I was reading some horrible statistic about what SUVs are doing, you know, to the world, basically. Um, and it's one thing to throw statistics at people about all the environmental destruction going on, but if you don't give them tools, but also community to do it. That's one of the things that has 